This morning, just to exalt your spirit and glorify God through the scripture, go to Psalm 37. Psalm 37, let's start from there as a springboard. Psalm 37, and I hope I won't shout this morning. Should I promise that? Oh, that's a hope, right? Psalm 37, thank you so much, choir. Good song, it's in line with what I was. I mean, what I'm going to minister this morning. And God continue to bless you and lift you guys up and give you a platform that will glorify himself. Amen. Amen. Psalm 37, can we read from verse 1? Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and withered as the green herb. Verse 3, can we all go together? After 2, go. Trust. Underline that word. Trust. In who? In the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Not trust for God, but trust in Him. In the Lord and do good. Yes. So shall thou dwell in the land. And verily thou shalt be fed. Verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desire of thy heart. Praise God. Don't fret. Don't be confused. Don't feel discouraged. Don't feel demoralized. Don't feel traumatized. Don't allow yourself to be jeopardized or whatever it is or whatever it takes that the enemy might do or is planning to do to shatter your dream, to destroy your future, to hinder your destiny. It's never going to work because you know why? The plan of God is settled forever. The Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Praise God. Amen. You ought not to have any business with the devil. You ought not to have any business with the kingdom of darkness. Listen to this. Your focus is not on what you are going through. Your focus is on who you are dealing with. Because whoever you are dealing with is God Almighty who is capable of solving your problem, dealing with that circumstances, healing your sick, disease or whatever it is that is troubling you or providing for you why because he is what almighty god he's the creator of the heavens and the earth he is the owner of your life praise god stop the funeral in your life stop the mourning in your life stop uh, disgracing or embarrassing yourself you have a god that loves you he's a good god if you go back to that verse, it says, fret not thyself. And it says something. What is the next word? Because. Let's deal with that issue a little bit. Because. Now, in that same verse, it says, do not embarrass yourself. I, I paraphrase now. Do not feel disappointed. Do not underestimate yourself. Do not criticize yourself. Do not accuse yourself. Do not condemn yourself. Do not limit yourself. Do not shame yourself because of who? Evil doers. Now, besides evil doers, there are people also that may want to be there to intimidate you. They want to be there to cry you down. They want to be there to make you feel low about yourself. They want to be there to, to, to call you names that are not yours. But the Bible says because. That word because, let me say this. Sometimes, Many of us were not in a situation because it is the will of God. We are in a situation because of the people around us. Or because of what we are going through. So the Bible says, according to the psalmist here, do not fret thyself because of evil doers. Whatever they are doing, let them do it. And whatever God will do, it will stand forever. Amen. Praise God. It says, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Iniquity, why jealous? The unbelievers. Why being envious? 
Why thinking negative? Forget about them. Amen? Amen. Listen to this. God wants you to shine. He says, Arise, Psalm 16. Don't forget that verse 1. Arise, what? Shine for the light is what? And the glory of the Lord is risen upon, upon me, upon you and I. So listen, God is saying, Arise, shine. In other words, God wants you to shine. Forget about others. You shine, you shine, I shine my shine. Turn to your neighbor and say, You shine your shine. I shine my shine. One more time. You shine your shine. I shine my shine. No jealousy. You shine your shine. I shine my shine. You are getting married. I am buying the house. No problem. I shine my shine. Hallelujah. You got a new job. I just got a child. You shine your shine. I shine my shine. No problem. Oh, God just provided for me. Yes, thank God for that. God just healed me also. You shine your shine? I I have no headache about what God is doing in your life. In fact, I should be praising God for you. Yeah. Give your neighbor a high five. Say, let's celebrate together. <laughs> Say, no fighting. No fight. Celebration. <laughs> Celebration. Do it, do it, do it. Next to the next verse, no fighting. <laughs> Celebration. No fighting. <laughs> Celebration. No quarreling at all. No need to fight. Celebration. Hallelujah. Allow God to do whatever he's doing in your life and allow God to do that which he's doing in the life of another individual. So the Bible says, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and withered as the green herb. Verse 3 and 4 are my focus this morning. Trust in the Lord and do good. There are two responsibilities that you have as a believer according to this text. Number one, trust in the Lord. It may not seem to be good. It may seem as if it's not going to work at all, but keep what? Trusting in the Lord. The doctors wrote you out, trust in the Lord. The lawyer said no, trust in the Lord. You cannot afford it Trust in the Lord. You feel disappointed, still what? Trust in the Lord. There are no friends, no neighbors, no family members to care for you. Trust in the Lord. Nobody says, I love you or I'll be there for you. Trust in the Lord. Those who are supposed to help you, they've abandoned you. Trust in the Lord. Those who even ignore you that could have at least showed up in your case, they still abandon you. Keep trusting in God. Why does it say trust in God and not in man? Not in your husband, not in your wife, not in your academics, not in your credentials, not in your bank account, not in your job. You trust in the Lord because God is the only one that abides forever. You trust in the Lord because he's the only one that will never fail. You trust in the Lord because he's the only one that will be there for you. In fact, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible also says that all the promises that God promised Israel, they are failed not a single one. So let me tell you, let me ask you a question. For you to stay in your struggling, in your battling, in your, in your pain and in your shame and to trust in God, which one you choose? What are you going to lose trusting God? How much have you lost trusting the enemy? How much have you lost being deceived by friends, people? So what are you going to lose trusting God? Who's supposed to be your best friend? Praise God. Turn to your neighbor and say, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord because he's the only one that I've never lied and will never lie. Amen. Trust in the Lord because he's the one that will go through the storm with you. He's the one that will go through the fire with you. Trust in the Lord. He's the one that is stronger than the strongest. He's the one that is higher than any highest. And he's the one that could fight any battle for you. And you are obviously going to win. He had never failed in any battle. So who do you choose to trust this morning? The Lord. Praise God. When it is not there financially, you still trust in the Lord. Praise God. When the doctor says you are going to die, you can still live and live much more than he expected. Why? Because your trust is who? In the Lord. Praise God. The last thing that you should ever
ever do in this life is to put your confidence in man because the Bible wants us that we ought not to cast our confidence in any man. Yes, but what God expects you to do is to trust. What is the meaning of that word trust? It doesn't just mean have faith. It means depend on him. Rely on him. Holy and solely devote and commit your life, your decision, your will, your everything unto God and God alone. That is what it means. So in other words, when it says trust, it means that there's no going back, there's no reversal. It means that there's no option. There's no other option. In other words, you're saying it is only God and God alone. Are you getting it? So when the Bible says trust in the Lord, in other words, the scripture is saying depend on him and him alone and you will not fail. The Bible is saying rely on him and him alone and he will not disappoint you. It is a man that will say I will be there for you. I will be there. Call me when you are ready. As soon as they see the phone call coming in, press the button off and turn the phone off. Praise God. It is a man that will promise you and say, I, I, I will do it, I will do it. And then by the time you know it, he could not afford to do it anymore. Maybe not because he doesn't want to do it, but because he wants to do it, but he could not. And he cannot afford it. But God Almighty that we serve will never run out of resources in Jesus' name. He's never going to fail you. He says, trust in the Lord. And not only that you ought to trust in God, the Bible says, and do good. You have a responsibility. What is your responsibility? What is your responsibility, please? Pay attention to me. To do what? To do good. Now ask your neighbor, say, when was the last time you do good to me? <laughs> ask your neighbor. Learn to do good. What does it mean to be good? It, listen to this. The Bible says that the love of God, just, just the love of God, just that, Forget about all that he had done. Just his love alone. Just the love of God abides forever and ever. He loves us with an everlasting love. Take note of that. Now, for you to do good to somebody, you must have love in your heart. No, I love her because she cooked for me. No, I love her because well, she's, she's going to give me something. So I'm going to, you know, no, it's not it for that. That's paying back for what you've got. I'm talking about genuine love. Somebody that you, you maybe you don't know them from Adam, but you just care for them. You just love them wholeheartedly. It's coming from here, your heart. Not from here. Or not because of what is happening around. Genuine love. It says what? Trust in the Lord and do good. To do good is to care for one another. To do good is to respect and love one another. To do good is to be there for one another. To do good is to support each other. To do good is to provide for each other. To do good is to ask about each other. To do good is to be there for each other. To know each other. If you're in this church, you just jump in and jump out. After this service, you don't have time for nobody. You cannot say hi to nobody. You, you have a problem. You need deliverance. <laughs> you should learn to care for each other. Hey, sis, how are you doing? How is everything with you? Are you okay? Listen, you've been beaten and battered for how many? 40 hours a week. And you only have Sunday to dash in for two hours and refresh yourself. So whenever you are here, make use of the opportunity and make sure you revitalize your spiritual man. You strengthen yourself. You uplift yourself so that you don't go back the way you came. Yeah. Have you ever seen God? Raise up your hand if you've seen him. Only one person. <laughs> Mama Shade, God bless you. <laughs> because you're right. Every day you look around, you see God. Show me God now. Show me God. Uh huh. That's right. As I see you now, I see God. I see the image of God. So every brother you bless, you're blessing God. Every brother you help, you're helping God. Have you ever read the scripture that says, never you said that you love God if you cannot love your brother. And Jesus, in fact, was the one that says, whatever you do unto any of these little ones, you've done it unto, yeah. unto your neighbor. Say, come and do good. Do good. Learn to do good. Learn to do 
Stop being greedy. Stop being self-centered. Stop being brother, sister, mine, 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 mine. Learn to care for each other. Learn to show love. Learn to support each other. So it says trust in the Lord and not only that, do good. There's a sister in the church that has need, go in for that need and help her. There's a brother that has need, go in and help him. There's somebody that is sick, call, pick up the phone and call, can I pray for you? Sometimes, listen to me, sometimes you don't, the person doesn't even need your money, just need your love. You know what, I just called to make your day. How are you doing? How is everything with you? Are you okay? Just that alone goes a long, long way. Let me tell you something. This is the best time in every year, Christmas season. But do you know also that this is the most frustrated time? It's the most frustrating moment when you need friends, you need company, you need people to talk to, you need somebody that cares. And there is no one. Do good. Buy shoes for another sister. Buy clothes for another brother. Look at them and observe them. Look at them from head to toe and say, this one, she needs a new blouse. I say, this one, he needs a new pants. Like, sing the Lord and do good. The Bible says, so shall thou dwell in the land. The only way you will be able to acquire that which God has already proposed for you, the only way you will be able to succeed, the only way you will be able to achieve your goal, is when your confidence, your faith, your hope, your trust is in God. But not only that, listen to this, when you are able to relate with each other in goodness, in love, and in kindness. The Ten Commandments is divided into two. The first five has to do with the love of God. The next five has to do with the love of your fellow man. Not only that, Jesus came and summarized everything again into two. He said, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength, and with all your soul. And the next commandment is the commandment that you don't like at all. What is it, please? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So can I have mine? Thank you. That's love. You see that? That's why the Bible talks about little children. Praise God. Jesus says, he says, if you do not love your brother, forget about going to heaven. To the extent that the Bible clearly says that never you come into the presence of God with your gift and your offering to offer unto God if you know you have an issue with a brother. You have something against that sister. You are bitter because of something that got wrong some time ago. Don't, don't, don't just come in. What shall I say to oh, my Lord? You have nothing to say. <laughs> nothing. The only thing that you have to say is to go to your brother and your sister. I have something to say. I'm jealous about you. And I gossiped the other day about you. Forgive me. Then you can say, okay, I forgive. Then I can come now to God and say. You can say, yes, what shall I say now? Then he will say, say, thank you, Lord. Other than that, you have nothing to say. Are you getting it this morning? Do good. When you do good, the Bible says you will be able to dwell in the land. I used to say this. The problem that you have with God might not be the one or the sin that you committed against God might not be the sin that will take people to hell. The sin that might take people to hell is the one that you will do against the next person. Yeah. Do you know God is jealous about every human being? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the thing that God God angry the most, the most, is when you hurt the next person. If you want to curse God now, he'll be angry with you, he might forgive you. But the next bro is like a mother. She can say, slap me, I'll bear it. But if you touch my child, I will kill you. That is how God behaves. God is saying, what did my son do to you? What did my daughter do to you? Why are you against him or her? Why are you trying to hurt that man? Why are you trying to hurt that woman? And God will easily go out of control and be religious and be so angry to crush you. Because why? You are tampering with the heart of God. Listen to this. The Bible says something. The Bible says something. Pay attention. It says, we are the apple of God's eye. God touches you touches the apple of God's eye. Can you imagine that illustration? In other words, anybody that touched you, Sister Chris, has touched the eyeball of God. Hey, 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 are you crazy? Let me see that demon. 
Let me see that which is a wizard that will attempt to touch you. The Bible says that person had touched the eyeball of God. And it's never going to be possible. Because you know what? The most protective part of your body is your eye. Even though it's always out there open, but yet, if a, a little dust tries to come by, you are easily closing your eyes. Why? Because you try to protect it from being hurt. It's a very complex part of your body. But it's the most sensitive part of your body. Because it has the most photographic memory of all time. Best, even beyond any computer ever made. Your eyes can just go one round, just one round, not even to one round, and can tell you everything that it picks up within one second. Your eyes. So the Bible says, whoever will try, attempt to touch you, it's like somebody trying to touch the eyes of God. God will be so mad, so angry. Praise God. Now the Bible says, when you trust God, you do good. And the Bible says, in doing that, you will be able to dwell in the land. And verily thou shalt be fed. Thou shalt be fed. That is why greedy people are always hungry. And hungry people are easily angry. So, your prosperity also can be determined based on your heart desire for other people. Do you know there are some people who will never win 649? They will never win Lotto Max? Because God knows, Sister Selby, that they are so greedy that if God bless them, they will not be able to bless the next person. There are some people, if God bless them today, they want you to be a slave to them. Because they have a new car, they have a new suit, they have a new dress. And when they show up, I'm telling you, the moment you say hi, it's like, what are you saying hi to? This friend that used to be, you, you used to sleep on the floor together. And now God has blessed him. And the moment, he, in fact, you are even older than him. He wants you now to call him uncle. Why? Because he is wealthy. The reason why the Bible says, if you do good, and if you trust God, you are going to be fed in the land. Pay attention. This is key to this message. It is because whatever God is going to give you is not just for yourself, it's for others. So that your life will be a blessing to the next man. Share your blessing. Don't your neighbor say, share your blessing. Until you change your heart condition, God will not give you what you deserve. Because he knows if he gives it to you, you are going, listen, the most dangerous man is the one that is blessed. And the most dangerous man also is the one that is educated. Anybody that is wealthy and is a wicked man will crush you easily. But if he is poor, for him to pick up that energy and might to crush you takes a long time. But if a wealthy man says, I will deal with you, careful. Because you can pay anybody to put the bullet on your head easily like that. So the Bible says, do good to one another. That's how you are going to be fed. The Bible says, you will dwell in the land. Not only that you are going to stay in the land. The Bible says, you will be fed. You will be fed. God is going to feed you. The reason why some people, God cannot feed them is because of their heart condition. They are greedy. They are self-centered. They still have the childish mentality. Everything is mine, 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 mine. Turn to your neighbor. Say, learn to love. They learn to share to one another. Hallelujah. Let's continue. It says, and verily, that is truly, thou shalt be fed. Verse 4. Verse 4. Very important for this message. Verse 4 says, delight thyself also in the Lord. Delight thyself in the Lord. When you do that, the Bible says what's going to be the result. And he shall give thee what? The desires, desires. You see that? There is an S there. Not just one desire. All that you desire in your heart, God will grant it unto you. But listen, if you read all these two verses, three and four, you discover two things. Number one, there's an instruction or there's a guide. That's number one. And then number two, afterwards, there's a what? There is a, a reward. You obey the instruction, you have the reward. You obey the Then this instruction says, delight thyself also in the Lord. How many of us delight ourselves in the Lord? Do they have to force you to come for all night prayers? Do they have to force you to read your Bible? Do they have to force you to live a holy life? Do we have to chase you to see where you are laying your head? Or the way you talk at home or at school? There are some people, they are only Christians at, in church. But at work, nobody knows that they go to church. The Bible says, delight thyself also in the Lord. In other words, let the desire of God burn in your life. Every day, listen. Let's be honest. 
those of you who are who are deeply in love with your husband or your wife, every time that man walks out of the door, he says, honey, what time are you coming back? Why? Because you are saturated with his love. Am I right? You've been overwhelmed with the love of your husband or your wife. You care for them. Or if you have a child, you don't want to lose bonds with them. Everywhere they go, you check on them. What are you doing? Where are you going? What are you playing with? You're so concerned. You're so care, caring about that particular child. It's at the center of your heart. May I ask you this morning, do you love God in as much as you love yourself or any other thing else? There are some people, they're in love of, they're in love of food. Food. You can kill them easily through food. They eat and eat, they eat and eat and eat, even as soon as they wake up, the first thing to, even before they say, thank you, Jesus, the, the fridge is already open. They eat in the morning, eat every time they have no control or gluttony. gluttonous they can eat anything they can never say no you give them burger thank you thank you jesus you give them fries thank you thank you jesus you give them jollof rice thank you thank they will never say no never say never all goes they are so addictive to food but they are not addicted to prayer they are not addicted to the word of god they are not addicted to worship. There are some people, it's money. They love money. They can easily kill you for money. And the Bible says, delight thyself also in the Lord. That is, let God be your heart desire. Let God be the center of your life. Let it be that if they are going to accuse you about your relationship with God, you are going to be found guilty. Let it be that you love God to the point that every moment, every time, every hour, your desire is for God. That is why David was even praying. He said, Lord, when shall I see thee? In fact, God, I imagine that you will just open the heaven and come down. The man loved God, loved God, loved God. He loved God so much that he was so overwhelmed with God. For you, you only love God when you are in church. When there's a beautiful song or there's music, you say, yes, yes, yes. That's the only time we hear yes, yes from you. But at home, in fact, the Bible looks like one of your furniture at home. So dusty. It's only on Sunday you pick it up. When was the last time you read your Bible on your own and God ministers certain things to you? When was the last time you spent time with God? You said, today I'm not going anywhere. No cell phone. Nothing. I don't care about anything. I'll only go use the washroom or take a break, but I'll stay home and spend time with God. Into this. When you come in to worship God, let it burn from the depth of your heart. Let, let it be that you love God. You love God so much that if a day go by without praying, you feel guilty. Not because God is saying you are guilty, but you say, where is my God? Where is my God? Oh my goodness, I miss God. When was the last time you said I miss God? When? If I God keep missing you, always say, when will my daughter come home? When will my son be restored? You should have passion for God. Not only that you fear God, not only that you obey Him, but inside of you, you love Him. You love Him, you love Him. You love Him to the extent that you, you want to say good morning, so you say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say, ah, are, you, are you saying praise the Lord because why you are overwhelmed by the love of God? In fact, David, David, David at one time, was it David or Job that says, I have loved him. He said, I loved his word more than my necessary food. In other words, he's saying, before you give me food, give me the Bible. Who do you love? Some of us, we are addicted to movies. You can sit on that computer and you, or that, in front of that TV screen. As the thing is going, that's how you're going. You know, you are so addicted to your screen. And so every day you sit in front of television or you sit in front of computer wasting your life. Who do you love? Who do you love? That's Amen. Love the Lord. Be addicted to the things of God. The Bible says, delight thyself also in the Lord. You see, that is why some people are not blessed. How can you? How dare you? If you know that I hate you, I hate you, I don't like you, I don't want to see you, and you know that, and I come to you, I say, brother, can you help me? He said, inside your heart, you say, look at this stupid man. I know you don't like me. 
I'm not going to give it to you. Why? Because you know that inside of me there is hatred against you, right? So you will not give it to me. You will not help me. Why? Because you know I don't love or care for you, right? But if you know inside of you that I love you, I care for you, the moment I say, I have a problem, I say, no, 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 pastor, don't, don't explain to me. I know, I know. Even though I have not been able to explain my problem to you, Sister Joyce, but deep down, because you have love and you know that I love you, say, Pastor, don't, don't, don't worry. I know, I know what you are here for. Why? It's coming from inside. Inside. Is that how we relate to God? Do we have real love for God? Do we have real love? When the Bible says in every aspect of our life, God must have the preeminence. The preeminence means the first place. Do we have such a love to the extent that nothing takes the place of God? Anything that trespasses the place of God in your life, you kill it. Any sin, any appetite of the world, any pleasure, any ungodliness that wants to trespass against God or against the word of God.